Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Pooja Rawat and this is our current affairs series on agriculture and rural development for the NABAD exam. All right. So we are covering current affairs for the month of August. All right. So before we begin, all those people who are here for the first time, do subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you don't miss on the latest updates. You can also join our telegram group wherein you can post your queries and you'll be updated with the upcoming videos. All right. So, yeah, let us begin. This is our first question. It says, consider the following statement with respect to Biju Swasti Kalyan Yojana. All right. So this uh, scheme, it's uh, not with something new, but this was in news recently uh, because of one additional feature. Right, so we'll uh, talk about that uh, in the subsequent slide. The first statement here is, it was launched by Odisha government in 2018 to provide universal health coverage. This one is correct. So this is a universal health coverage scheme. All right, so launched by Odisha government and this was launched in the year 2018. Now, second statement here is, recently government has started providing smart health cards under this scheme to get the distress-free, hassle-free treatment at the best available healthcare facilities. This one is also correct. So recently, Odisha government has started providing this smart health cards to the people all right, so that they can get a cashless treatment in the uh, different uh, hospitals and the impanel private hospitals. All right, so this will provide a distress-free and the hassle-free treatment to all those people. So both of the statements are correct and the correct option here would be C. Now let's talk about this scheme in a detail. So this was launched in the 15th August 2018 which aims to provide universal health coverage that means it will be available to all the people with special emphasis on the health protection of the economically vulnerable people. Although this uh, scheme is for all the people all right irrespective of the financial status but it will specifically focus on the economically vulnerable families all right now it has two components first one is the free health service for all for all the people irrespective of their income status or residence all people would be covered and they can avail this facility in all the state government healthcare facilities okay so government hospitals join government healthcare facilities join pe free healthcare services ko avail kar sakte hai, everyone irrespective of their uh, income or status all right and all this treatment is uh, cashless and there would be no requirement of any document to be produced at the time of availing these healthcare facilities all right now the second component in this scheme is specifically for the vulnerable people now this additional facility of free healthcare beyond the government medical college hospital so in this component uh, private hospitals would also be covered there would be impaneled uh, uh, hospitals private hospitals that has already been shortlisted by the government so not all private hospitals are covered but uh, there is a shortlisting of private hospitals wherein the people can get uh, free healthcare facilities all right now this will be provided to over 70 lakh families through annual health coverage of rupees 5 lakh per annum. So 5 lakh per annum per uh, family, which is the health care finance hai, wo provide by the uh, Odisha government. And women jo members and family, they can avail up to 10 lakh rupees. Right? In private impanel hospitals within, within the state or outside the state and all the government hospitals in premier health institutes outside the state all right so jitne bhi private impaneled hospital hai jo ki uh, state mein bhi ho sakte hai aur bahar bhi ho sakte hai all right and jitne bhi government hospital hai all over india jitne bhi government hospitals hai un sabhi hospitals mein healthcare facilities jo hai wo uh, freely provide ki jayegi uh, vulnerable people ke all right so isme jo beneficiaries hai aapke wo so rahenge biju krushak kalyan yojana card holders then your BPL card holders, which are your below poverty line people, so then ante the annyojana card holders, which is specifically for the poorest of the poor, and the low income families are covered under this benefit. Okay, so the vulnerable and economically weaker section, for those people, this component is added. 
Now, recently, smart health card will be provided to around 3.5 crore people in 96 lakh families in the state, and the beneficiaries again would be all the food security scheme ke jitne bhi nominees hain, beneficiaries hain, Annapurna scheme or which is a food security scheme and the Antodaya initiative which is again uh, for the poor, poorest of the poor people all right so all these people will get uh, these smart health cards and they can avail uh, healthcare facilities all right uh, that would be uh, hazelless or the cashless facility all right now the next question is which ministry is involved in the Vriksha Ropan Abhiyan 2021? So this Abhiyan or, uh, is going to be launched tomorrow, so, uh, 19th of August. All right. And you have to tell like which ministry is responsible for this Abhiyan. Now we have Ministry of Coal. Then we have Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Then Ministry of Jal Shakti. And then we have Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Now the correct answer here is Ministry of Coal. So under the green initiative or uh, green redrive, the this ministry has launched or is going to launch in fact this Riksha Open Abhiyan on 19th of August 2021. So what this ministry is going to do is uh, let us study about this Abhiyan. Okay. So Ministry of Coal has set an ambitious target under the Go Greening Drive. So they are um, already implementing this go greening drive and under this they are going to launch this riksha uh, riksha open abhiyan in which they are trying to cover 2385 hectares of area under bio reclamation or plantation okay so jo bhi area under bio reclamation hai un sabhi areas ko cover kiya jayega aur usme plantation jo hai wo kiya jayega riksha open yani ki are planting trees okay so plantation side now these 300 plantation sites so these are more than 300 uh, plantation sites in and around the coal fields all right so ministry of coal kya kya coal mining kar rahe hai coal mining karte hai you are actually doing what you are increasing the carbon footprint of uh, the uh, nation like right? the carbon footprint up add kar rahe environment pe so to compensate that this ministry has started with this drive uh, go greening drives in which more and more trees would be planted all right now it is a key event under the azadika amrit mahotsav celebration in the coal sector so it would be a part of this azadika amrit mahotsav which is basically to celebrate the 75 years and five years of independence all right now what are the benefits of this abhiyan or this initiative first one environment sustainability in the mining operations since mining operation adding carbon footprint so this will offset that right and in the longer term it's going to uh, increase the sustainability in the coal sector all right now the second benefit would be it will help the coal sector to obtain obtain the social and environment licenses in order to operate so kya hota hai jab uh, mining ki jati hai to they have to get the environment clearance all right so environment clearance ke liye ab jab ye is tarike ki plantation drive chala rahe to obviously uh, they can say that they are offsetting the carbon footprint that they are going to add in the nearby future so this will also help in getting the coal sector to obtain these licenses in order to operate different plants. Now the third benefit would be it would sen uh, sensitize, sorry, sensitize and motivate society and the common people to make more afforestation initiatives in their area. So it will create awareness, it will sensitize people to go for afforestations, all right. And yes, so remember this India has a twin problem first thing in india's in energy demand is going to increase in the nearby future all right so we are in um, growing economy right so we are growing e economy so obviously much energy demand it's going to increase in the nearby future and secondly uh, on the other side agar aap dekhe, so we are a party to the paris climate hai na? so our responsibility is that we reduce carbon footprint ka kya kare? Reduce kare. so किस तरीके से sustainability और अपनी energy demand को plus environment sustainability को balance करने के लिए this initiative is a very important and it's a right step uh, in this direction right so important significance को समझना ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है now question number third is which of the following are the varieties of apples so recently uh, these apples actually been uh, 
exported to the Bahrain. All right, so along with uh, Epida in collaboration with uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh. Right, so these apples are exported to uh, the Bahrain or the Middle East countries. Now you have to identify which of these are the varieties of apples. All right. So first one is the dark Bahrain Gala. Then the second is a Royal Delicious. Third is Scarlet Spur. And fourth is Red Velox or all of the above. The right answer here is all of the above. These are all the varieties of apples. Okay. And these are exported from the Himachal Pradesh recently. Now question number fourth is consider the following statement with respect to the recently launched cattle chip Indigo. Very important. This cattle chip has been launched. All right. And uh, statement is the first. It is India's first cattle genomic chip okay, for the conservation of pure varieties of indigenous cattle breeds. This one is correct. So this is India's first cattle genomic chip and it is world's largest cattle genomic chip. Okay? So genomic chip mein basically hota kya is tarike ka apke ek chip hai. This may you will have uh, multiple cells okay? and each cell will consist of different DNAs. Okay, so these different DNAs will be the benefit of all of your indigenous cattle breeds, Gir, Sahiwal, all of these different DNAs will be recorded. What will happen with this? You can do genomic and DNA analysis. So since the government is also promoting the cross-breeding among the indigenous cattle, so we are promoting indigenous cattle and conserving. So this is going to be helpful in the conservation efforts of the government. Uh, for the indigenous cattle and in the cross breeding. So DNA analysis ke help se. So for example, you have a property that your cattle has to increase milk productivity. So if you have a DNA analysis that in this particular breed mein, uh, milk productivity is more, you can easily cross breed and add that function to the uh, newly breed. Right? So uh, this is the benefit of a genomic chip. So it helps in the analysis of genes or genetic analysis or DNA analysis. All right. Now second statement is it is developed by the concerted efforts of the scientists in the National Institute of Animal Biotechnology, which is in Hyderabad. This one is also correct. So this chip is being developed by the scientists of National Institute of Animal Biotechnology, which is uh, situated in the Hyderabad. So both of these statements are correct. The correct option would be C. Now the last question for today's session is question number fifth. It says as per CMIE, which is your center for monitoring Indian economy. All right. It says that the share of agriculture in total employment in 2019 is. So according to the data that is provided by this organization uh, called center for monitoring Indian economy. So it has recently revealed that the share of agriculture in total employment has been increasing year by year. Right? And in the 2019, the share in the total employment was the options in 36, 37, 38 or 39 percent. The correct answer here is 38 percent. So 2019, 20, the agriculture ka share tha was around 38 percent in the total employment. Remember that jo aapka PLF is in, periodic labor force survey. Iske according, uh, it was around uh, 47, I guess, approximately 47, 46 point something. Okay? So, dono ka aapko difference pata hona chahiye. CMI ke according, share of agriculture in the total employment is 38%, while according to the PLFS, it is around 46 point something or around approximately 47% in the total employment. So, uh, remember both of these figures. So this was all about today's session. I hope you like it. In case you have any queries, you can post it down. Alright, we'll see you in the next session. Till then, keep working hard, keep studying.